Now here's some more things for you to ponder. This question of the free will came up in a discussion on a website, Sean's website. He goes by the name of Mr. Christian, beautiful brother in Christ. Uh, another individual had misunderstood what he was trying to get across in his video without going in about that. But then this question of the free will came into play. So this was my response to another who had responded to that video he put out. Here's that response. This matter of an individual believing came from the individual at least being willing to get what they in their own fall of mind were at one time not willing to believe. There's a time you weren't willing to believe. There's a time you ended up believing. What made me, what changed me to believe? He was saying that's, Sean was saying, which I agree, that's the, that's the only external evidence that really counts for anything. Not like these fruit inspectors that try to go and buy some stupid idea of giving up habits or something like that as proof of evidence that you're saved. Uh, so this matter of individual belief came from the individual at least being willing to get what they and their own fall of mind were one time not willing to believe. It's written, if any man be willing, he will know the truth. You got to be willing. This use of willing isn't willpower, as we always say. You got to have the willpower. Now, we ain't got the willpower, not to believe in things that God's offering. This use of willing isn't willpower, but simply a willingness. God will respond to this, like sparks from spit and steel. And then up out of this, their awakened human spirit comes the needed belief. It's an internal thing that comes out, not external. We'll be finding out here in a minute. Paul expressed this in the total in the total context of Romans chapter ten, not just one single verse in that chapter. Now you can pull text out of context and come up all God grades your idea. That's what I'm saying. This has to be seen in the con the total context of Romans chapter ten, and then you go the chapters before that and then chapters after that, and then you go to one letter to the other letter, Paul, you'll see a, a total total expression of an answer. Doesn't come out of a single verse. Uh, that's what I mean by in context. Paul expressed this in the total context of Romans ten, not just one single verse in that chapter. Using living words of that chapter makes it clear. This is you taking the spirit given truth that Paul wrote to the church of Corinth. Now he said you have to take this. Your eyes not seen this, nor has your heard this, nor has entered the heart of man those things which God has prepared for them that love. Then he goes on to say, Yet through the Spirit we can know. How can we know? He takes these spirit given truths that we read the Bible, and he'll give you spirit given words to explain it. Because there's words that they used back in that day, or like in the King James text, you anytime have to get a modern translation to understand what they knew in the old English. And that's why people will fight that. They want to stick with the old English. Now, who uses old English today? Many of us don't. So you've got to watch the different translations. I know they can distort it and all that stuff. But the, the final answer to this whole thing is, if you get a hold of your human spirit, awakened by the Holy Spirit, and hear from your Father on this matter, that's, that's the finality of it all. That's the one thing you got to make. That's the more sure word of prophecy that we should pay attention to as a light that shines in his dark corner place as Peter brought out until the day dawns and day saw rises in your heart. This day dawning and the day saw in your heart is the quickened human spirit wakened by the Holy Spirit and you hearing from your Father. That's all it is. So Paul expressed this in the total context to understand not just one single verse in that chapter. Using living words of that chapter makes it clear. Otherwise you will get thousands of opinions of what was being expressed. This matter of how we were brought to being willing. How we were brought to being willing. Gets debated. It's clearly written. That this will. Isn't by our will. Now, it isn't my will. John chapter 1 verse 13. 
which were born, not of blood, of being born again, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of men, but of God. So we say, no, you'll get all kinds of opinions about that thing. Let me read on. That doesn't throw out the free will of humanity as Calvinists teach. If you know anything about Calvin, they don't believe that a human being has a free will. God so wills things, and he wills who's going to be saved, who's going to be lost. Uh, let me read on. See it this way. It comes down to the surrender of this free will to at least being willing. That's your part. You ain't got the willpower to believe this. If thou shalt confess to the mouth, Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The con this conscious mind and this subconscious basement of ours will block. I wasn't there. I don't know if he raised from the dead. Even that will stop you. Well, it says, and this comes out in the context, that was expressed in the context of Romans chapter 10. It comes down to the surrender of this free will to at least being willing. Not that we even understand any of this at the moment of decision when we first believe. I didn't know none of this. He's talking about 50 years ago. I didn't understand all of this stuff. I couldn't have explained what I'm explaining right now. To at least initiate our being willing. I was willing. The situation in my life brought me to a place where I was willing to get anything that was different than what the life I had then. To at least initiate our being willing even this is his work. Hear this? Even this, our being willing, is his work. It, expressed in Philippians chapter 2, 13, hear this. For it is God which worketh in you, and he's working it out. He works in you to work it out. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure, so it is God drawing us to being first willing then to do His will, which was to save you. Pre-salvation work of the Holy Spirit. Getting you to see these things. Seeing you the, the need to see the sin nature. To discover how God solved that through His righteousness. That would save you from going to one of two judgments, the white throne judgment of God, if you reject what Christ offers, or the beam of state of Christ, who has nothing to do with your salvation. It's just a matter of gaining one degree of glory to another degree of glory. So, to at least being willing, even his work expressed in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, for it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure, so it is God drawing us to being first willing, then to do his will, which was to save you. When we all first believed, we didn't know this, nor could we have expressed it in this way. I couldn't express it 50 years ago. This comes later. It's taken 50 years to express this. After he gives spirit given words, he reveals spirit given truths. This comes later after God gets our free will decision. Evil has forever in the day, abused our free will. He did stuff to you whether you were willing or not. To trickery, to lie, deception. Yet our Father gets our free will and does this by giving us the willingness to at least being willing and to participate in this decision. He shares his glory with you. And it wasn't me. I wasn't willing to listen to him. I ignored it. I didn't know it existed. To the course of life, out of his love for me, he has slowly brought me to a place where I was willing. And you can do that for yourself, for others. If you share things to people that are not willing at that time, say it's not a matter of your willpower. You can't believe this at this moment, but I'm going to pray for you. God will bring you to that place where you at least be willing. Are you at least willing? That if what I'm sharing to you about who Jesus is, what life's all about, how he came to save, if you're willing, are you willing? Yeah, I'm willing. If this is true, he'll tie it to you. I'll leave him alone. I've seen people go away for days, weeks, months, years, and come back later saying, remember that day you talked to me about being willing? I said, yeah. He said, 
he brought me to being willing. I now believe. <laughs> That's beautiful. Now sit there and argue with him. Try to push him to the kingdom of God. No. Have faith and trust that God can do this. He can bring to where they're willing. Here's another comment that I shared to Sean. Another one of his videos about this other video and this conversation. So later I responded with this added thought to Sean and later the conversation we and this other individual shared and posted. Amen, Sean. You clearly said evidence of faith. That was he put that in the leader comment area of his lead to his video. He used the Hebrews chapter eleven verse one. He was talking about evidence of faith, not evidence of a uh, fruit. Well, let me get into an article. You clearly said evidence of faith. Now, faith, this unseen substance, is the evidence. This unseen substance. It's, that's the evidence. So something hoped for, yet is coming from an unseen source and not our human efforts as those fruit inspectors who look for something in our self-efforts to perform, giving up some stupid habit, you know. You ain't saved if you smoke. You ain't saved if you drink. You no, know? they want external evidence based on some stupid behavior. You use Hebrews 11.1. 1. How faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Which I, above here, just gave a, a paraphrase, or what's called living words of it. That should have been clear enough. That text, if you understood that text, you would understand what he was talking about in his video. You should have been clear enough. As you point out, a simple search reveals many verses with the word evidence. There are people that frown on the fact that you have to have evidence in your life to prove that you're saved. Now, I could get yeah, because people go to extreme with that. Hey, have everybody going to hell because there's always some evidence against you. Because you're always contending with the flesh. Our spirit wrestles against the flesh. We're going to be contending with the flesh to the day you leave this world. Not until after the beam of seed of Christ is this flesh left there and it doesn't enter the kingdom. This should have been clear enough as you pointed out a, a simple search on the web reveals many verses with the word evidence that could take this even deeper beyond so-called seen evidence. Now hear this text. The just shall live by faith, the unseen substance, and not by sight. All these proof of your salvation, the externals, is more of an internal evidence rather than an external evidence like the cleaning of the outside of the cup and not the inside of the cup that our Lord so taught. The self-righteous individual of his day only focused on the cleaning the outside of the cup, yet inside that cup, they were full of dead man bones, you know, poison in the cup. He wanted to cleanse the inward. James had said it. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Then it don't stop there. He goes on to say it. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. The double mind. There sits the mind of Christ in your human spirit. There sits your conscious mind that sees and hears and gets input, called the flesh, and that we do inhale it, then you only exhale because it, it gets stored in this subconscious heart storage area, and you speak only what you see and hear. Out of the abundance of heart, a mouth will speak. It's that heart that blocks ever hearing from your quickened human spirit by the Holy Spirit from your Father. If you could get that word, but she has to cleanse this heart so that word can come through the heart to your conscious mind and then you able to speak it out. If you're not doing that and all that you're speaking is coming out of the subconscious heart storage base of the subconscious mind, the heart is deceitful, definitely wicked, who can know it. And what you're producing, if you're producing out of this inevitably inhaled fleshy world opinion of race, culture, second religious greed, if that's all you got stored in our heart, you're producing death. 
It's through the spirit that comes life. But to get that spirit to come through the come through your heart, James says you've got to be cleansed. He had to make a pathway to there. So you're a vessel to which the Father can speak. But it's not your words. It's his words. Jesus, as the Son of Man, the Son of God in the middle of the Son of Man, demonstrated that. When he said, the words that I speak, they are not my own but they are my father's. He didn't act independent of the father. Though being in the form of God, he thought not Robert would be equal to God, but took upon him the form of a servant and became obedient even unto death. He set aside independent use of an attribute which he possessed, being God and the God a deity. And while he was here in the mood of the Son of Man, he was dependent upon God the Father. He didn't take his carnal mind of his soul, and cut it off from God, he constantly surrendered his soul's feelings and thoughts. When he said, I have many things to say and judge of you, I have feelings and I have carnal thoughts that I could go with from my particular race, culture, and creeds I picked up, being born as a son of man. But I set that aside and I go. What do I hear? And I see from my father. That's what I speak. That's what we should do as sons of God, being in this body as a son of man. That was the model. We don't lean on to our own understanding of our fallen soul, but always we acknowledge him. He directs your path. You should ask him every day, what would you want to do and say to this vessel? That's what he wants you to do. And your vessel is only. Well, that gives you some idea. Some more things for you to ponder. A lot of these things in this series, things to ponder, and then the other videos, the series of videos, take this subject matter to a greater depth. This is just some highlights that I shared in a commentary on YouTube. God bless you.